Hi everybody, welcome into my channel, Colleen C. to Serendipity. I'm Colleen. Today is January 15th, 2023, and I would like to bring you this day in history. On January 15th, 1929, Martin Luther King Jr. is born in Atlanta, Georgia, the son of a Baptist minister. King received a doctorate degree in theology and in 1959, Held organize, helped organize the first major protests of the African American Civil Rights Movement, the successful Montgomery bus boycott. Influenced by Mohan's Gandhi, he advocated civil disobedience and nonviolent resistance to segregation in the South. The peaceful protests he led throughout the American South were often met with violence, but King and his followers persisted and the movement gained momentum. A powerful or orator, King appealed to Christian and American ideals and won growing support from the federal government and Northern whites. In 1963, Bernard Rustin, and A. Phillips Rudolph led a massive march on Washington for jobs and freedom. The event's grand finale was King's famous I Have a Dream speech. 250,000 people gathered outside the Lincoln Memorial to hear his stirring speech. In 1963, the Civil Rights Movement achieved two of its greatest successes the ratification of the 24th Amendment, which abolished a poll tax, and the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which prohibited racial discrimination in employment and education and outlawed racial segregation in public facilities. Later that year, King became the youngest person to win the Nobel Peace Prize. In, 19, in 2014, Malala Yusuf Gez became the youngest to receive the Nobel Prize at age 17. The late 1960s, King openly criticized U.S. involvement in the Vietnam, in Vietnam, and turned his efforts to winning economic rights for poor Americans. He was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee on April 4th, 1968. Now I'd like to bring you another one since this was so short. Vermont declares independence from Colony of New York. Having reorganized the need for their territory to assist, to assert its independence from both Britain and New York and remove themselves from the war they were waging against each other, a convention of the future Vermont Vermonters assembled in Westminster and declared independence from the Crown of Britain and the Colony of New York on January 15, 1777. The convention's delegates included Vermont's future governor Thomas Chittenden and Ira Allen who would become known as the father of the University of Vermont. Delegates first named the independent state New Connecticut and in June 1777, finally settled on the name Vermont, an imperfect translation of the French for Green Mountain. One month later on July 2nd, 1777, a convention of 72 delegates met in Windsor, Vermont to adopt the state's new and revolutionary constitution. It was formally adopted on July 8th, 1777. Vermont's constitution was not only the first written national constitution drafted in North America, but also the first to prohibit slavery and to give all adult males, not just property owners, the right to vote. Thomas Chittenden 
became Vermont's first governor in 1778. Throughout the 1780s, Congress refused to acknowledge that Vermont was a separate state independent of New York. In the response, frustrated Vermont tears went so far as to inquire if the British would remit their territory to the empire as a part of Canada. Vermont remained an independent nation even two years after George Washington became president of the United States of America under the new U.S. Constitution. However, as the politics of slavery threatened to divide the U.S., Vermont finally admitted as a new nation, 14th state in 1791 serving as a free counterbalance to slaveholding Kentucky, which joined the Union in 1792. I want to thank you for watching today, and I want you to stay safe and stay blessed. And remember to smile, because I love you, but more importantly, God loves you. And don't forget, I go live every Saturday night at 5 p.m. Central, that's 6 p.m. Eastern. Everybody have a blessed day. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye now.